So before we end, uh, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about entrepreneurs for Nepal form that you started on Facebook. It has 40,000, 50,000 um, members in it. Um, yeah, the question is, a lot of people like myself and folks who live and work abroad I want to find ways to invest in Nepal or find ways to even give back. And what, what do you suggest? What's the, what's the best way for someone like us to make a meaningful impact in the sort of the economic or even social um, you know, aspect of the, the, the Nepalese society? Well, you know, Entrepreneurs for Nepal would be, the Facebook group of Entrepreneurs for Nepal would be a perfect start because mm -hmm. there you'll find people who are actually doing mm -hmm. things and people who are asking for help mm -hmm. in doing those things or mm -hmm. making things happen. Mm -hmm. So people are busy creating opportunities, they're looking for mentors, they're looking for partners, they're looking for employees, and they're also looking for uh, if to see if their ideas will succeed. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of vibrant things happening in there. So just go out there, you know, ask a lot of questions or, you know, just go through the forum, find a lot of people, like-minded people and create a poll. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a great way for people who are especially outside the country to start feeling, you know, the kind of entrepreneurial ecosystem that's happening inside the country. Got it. And the other thing sort of related to it is, um, more often than not, a lot of people who are Nepali and recognize themselves as Nepali, but they live abroad and they do a whole lot to contribute back. I mean, we have lots of examples. We have Praval Groom, we have individuals who send money home, help their brothers and sisters go to school and stuff like that. But a narrative that a lot of us can, uh, can uh, you know, <laughs> feel when, I, when we go back home is, if you're not in the country, you're not contributing, or whatever you do doesn't count. Mm -hmm. And uh, some some folks have expressed to me that you know, this farka, this pano, mm -hmm. point of view kind of ignores a lot of people who bring in a lot more resources, talent, and other things without being physically present in the country. In the country, All right? So how do you? And I think you know you guys also uh, are proponent of this farka, this pano. How do you help answer those who think they can contribute even more than they would by being back in Nepal without being in Nepal? How they can help is not only with their talents, uh, by being abroad and still able to contribute through cloud technology. Those people abroad can actually still contribute by sharing their networks, uh, sharing their friends uh, about Bidikshil Nepali or other organizations that they believe are doing a really good cause. And um, for us, uh, personally, for the work that I'm doing, uh, platforms like Viviction Nepali, the system that we're trying to build uh, also requires resources or funds that we can channel it into uh, the idea to transform Nepal into a peaceful and prosperous country. So that is one way that they can help. That's probably the best way they can help when they cannot be physically be in the country. Obviously, there are other ways to do it, especially with the internet cloud technology. But um, like you said, you know, migrant workers who are abroad, they're all, you know, sending remittance in. Um, if they want to see the Nepal that, you know, uh, that they believe should be, then they can also invest in um, the cause or the political party that they feel like can make that change according to uh, their perspective and uh, for the idea of having the sort of Nepal that they always wanted to see. Mm -hmm. so, so To add a little bit, when I think uh, I do agree with what Anusha is saying is basically, you know, uh, most, most people are hacking at the branches of evil in Nepal. I think I think Nepalese worldwide uh, should focus on hacking at the roots of evil in Nepal because you know that's 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 where you know, the right amount of energy can be spent on mm -hmm. and um, when I was in Harvard a week ago I met a very young you know talented researcher and he said do you know how many people are doing PhDs in, in the US and I said I don't know and he said thousands there's individually excellent Nepalese all around the world. 
Sorry, those are thousand Nepalese. Nepalese. Yes. <laughs> so what I mean is, if we can connect, if this thousand, if this individually excellent Nepalese can start to be connected with each other, that is the power that is, you know, really going to change the face of our country. And because the world is much more smaller and flatter, mm -hmm. you don't really don't need to be in a specific place. How we, like how Vivekshin Nepali built its economic or foreign policies is not because it, it was like by these five people who stayed in Kathmandu. It was by the global, uh, by the Nepalese who were all around in Finland, in the US, in the UK, in the in UAE. They all collaborated and actually we came up with our constitution draft, we came up with the foreign policy, economic policies and even actions. Much faster, you know, and much... I think mature way than would have been possible 10 or 20 years ago. So you really can, I think earthquake is another example of how we could really harness the energy, you know. But I think the key focus is um, individually excellent Nepalese need to start connecting to hack at the roots of evil, not at the branches. Because that's where I think the energy is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, not channeled to the right. So when you say hack at the roots uh, as opposed to the branch, sure. the logic of it obviously makes a lot of sense. What, what's a concrete example in Nepali setting? I mean, for example, um, I mean, I think, um, you know, Nepalese are highly, you know, obviously humans, we are very highly emotional beings, right? When we see a sad young child um, uh, who doesn't get to, you know, study, we invest a lot on that child. We forget and to invest on what is creating that kind of, ch you know, thousands of childs. That's how what's happening, right? We have um, uh, our own sisters, mothers, you know, who are being trafficked. We focus on the cure a lot, but we don't focus on the prevention. And so what I'm urging is people to think a little bit more about what is causing, you know, uh, then, then be very emotionally, you know, uh, as opposed to being reactive, be yeah, proactive. Proactive, basically, yeah, Fine. you hit it, okay. you know. Okay. And, you know. Start being proactive because you are the change that, you know, you you have to become the change that you seek in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Because everyone wants to change the world, no one wants to change themselves. But that's that's the way, you know. I, if Nepalese all on the all around the world have been exposed and have seen, you know, what. Uh, how good, you know, things could be. I think they should transplant or transfer that energy and that that skills back home, mm -hmm. and you could be creating opportunities back home. Mm -hmm. I think your investment into certain businesses, certain you know, uh, places could actually be creating wonders in a place like Nepal. So you know, I think I just probably become a big action citizen. <laughs>